Hi, I'm Larry Magid, the CEO of ConnectSafely.org, which is the U.S. host of Safer Internet Day. And today we have two guests. One actually isn't a guest. It's Carrie Gallagher, who's Connect Safely's Director of Education. But we're also joined by Shailen Farnsworth, who's the National Director of Education, Outreach, and Success at the News Literacy Project, which is a project that's very dear, near and dear to my heart, uh, trying to educate Americans about news and how to really understand both truth and fiction in what we may perceive as news. Uh, so Shailen, welcome. And how about we start by just telling me a little bit about the News Literacy Project. Thank you so much for having me as part of your program. As you stated, I'm Shailen Farnsworth and I'm the National Director of Educator Outreach and Success at the News Literacy Project. The News Literacy Project was started in 2008 by Alan Miller, our current CEO, when he visited his daughter's classroom, middle school classroom, and he realized that the students there were not equipped with the skills to discern fact from fiction. He began the News Literacy Project, and our mission is uh, we are a nonpartisan national education nonprofit, and we provide programs and resources for educators, students, and also the public to teach, learn, and share the abilities needed to be smart, active consumers of news and information and equally engaged participants in democracy. So Carrie Gallagher has some questions which are really specifically aimed at the educational side. And I just wanna mention that Carrie, in addition to being the uh, Director of Education for K Connect Safely, is also the co-author with myself of our guide to media literacy and fake news. So she's uniquely qualified uh, to be uh, commenting and asking questions on this subject. Carrie, uh, welcome to the program today. Thanks for having me today, Larry. Um, Shailen, thanks for joining us. In addition to our Parent and Educator Guide to Media Literacy and Fake News, Larry and I recently co-authored our Parents Guide to Tech for Tots. And it's specifically aimed at how to, to teach children about technology when they're at their youngest, toddlers, early elementary. So when we talk about that, um, that audience, how can parents really help their youngest children start to build the skills early that they need to be news literate as they get older? That's a great question, Carrie, and something that's on the top of everyone's mind, especially if you have parents of young ones at home. Me personally, I have a middle school and a high school student. Most of our resources and, and uh, platform are geared towards middle school and high school, but because of the needs that you just spoke about, we're starting to develop early elementary resources for educators and parents to use at home. I think probably using what is relevant and uh, engaging to your students, whether they're um, second grade to high school. So for instance, in our newest lesson made for those earliest grades, we use a, a picture that was shared online with the main character of Elsa. And how do we know this is truly Elsa or it is fiction? Um, and so using something that is recognizable and allowing them to understand what sort of cues does that picture or the text give us to let us know it is not really Elsa, but this is just made up. Oh, what a great approach. I really love using what children are already passionate and familiar with to, to start to dig into those skills. You mentioned you're really um, strong in terms of offering resources and strategies to adolescents, so middle school through a high school. Um, maybe you can share some of those resources today so that educators and parents know where they can look. Everything we create for educators and for students and for the public now is free to use. Our flagship program is called Checkology. It is an online platform that includes 14 now, Carrie, I have to tell you about the most recent lesson, 14 lessons created by our content area experts, as well as journalists in the field. It is browser-based, so it's perfect for any device, any browser, and hybrid learning, remote learning, face-to-face, -face, and it's very multimodal. Short videos that have teaching points, lots of formative assessment with engaging, relevant um, examples that students latch onto. So for instance, they understand how information is zoned, understand bias, understand democracy, arguments and evidence. It's aligned to social studies, ELA, and uh, it can be used in a variety of disciplines. I've really poked around at some of these lessons recently. And one of the things I love about the videos is that you um, really use the talents of um, media personalities that our students recognize. So they're automatically engaged because they're not, talk they're not looking at 
you know, unfamiliar people or images. They're looking at images that they're seeing every day and applying it to the lessons. And I found them really engaging um, in terms of the activities as well. Um, Larry, I know you wanted to talk a little bit about moving past childhood and adolescence to adulthood when it comes to news literacy. Well, that's right. And I actually have two aspects of that question. One, of course, is what resources you have to work with adults. And the second is the kind of relationship between the parent and the child. We tend to be sort of trained to think of the parent as a teacher and the child as a learner. But in fact, there are cases, and I know of some of these, where the child actually has a pretty good sense of news literacy and the parent may be going off into some weird direction that maybe needs to be kind of uh, thought about and where the child may be the critical thinker and the adult uh, may be you know, buying into a conspiracy or uh, going online and reading stuff that perhaps isn't quite so accurate. And so talk a little bit about how adults and children can work with each other, uh, both in terms of the parent as a mentor, but in this case, maybe as a child or the teen as a mentor because of current surge of misinformation, the need to support public resources um, has become part of our mission as well. And so along with Checkology platform for teachers, we also have Checkology for the public, which is a great way for parents and guardians and families to be involved in the learning, to discuss those learning points with students and to hone their own skills. I will be the first to admit, I want to modify what my mother posts on Facebook, Carrie. She, she clicks that like, she clicks the amen, and she reshares things she should definitely not be sharing. And she always asks, well, how do I know that it is misinformation? Our resources are developed not only to be engaging with the platform, but we have an app called Informable that you can put on your phone. We have multiple quizzes that you can take to test your uh savviness with information online, as well as professional learning opportunities. Every week we publish what's called the SIFT, and this collects all of the misinformation from the previous week and allows not only teachers and educators, but also adults to sift through the misinformation shared and hone their skills of understanding misinformation and disinformation. It's filled with examples, um, it has a viral rule rumor rundown, and also news goggles, a, a slide deck ready to go in the classroom. So we have a variety of public and educator resources that are free to use and, and help not only students hone their skills, but then share all of that information with their parents. Because I'm sure, as you guys can attest, there are multiple times when my mother reaches out and says, why does this keep showing one on my Facebook? Why can I not delete this message? How come I cannot con click that link? So equipping them uh, with the understanding that our students are now gaining in their classes is important and we have those resources for you. As a subscriber to the SIFT, mm -hmm. um, I really appreciate the opportunity to share some of those snippets and examples in my classroom with my students when it's relevant to conversations that we've had to, um, to help them learn how you know, you all are modeling applying those news literacy skills to real life media and news. And I think that those are really invariable and, and great for teachers and even parents to, to bring up at the dinner table or to bring up to kind of start or activate a class period. So I would definitely advise that. Also, I just wanted to give a little plug for our guide to media literacy and fake news at Connect Safely because we have lots of great conversation starters for parents. And one thing that we talk about, Shailen, that I'm sure you talk about at the, at the News Literacy Project is the importance of emotional intelligence when it comes to news literacy, that a lot of media that's published both by legitimate and fake news sources is meant to kind of pull at us emotionally and engage us in that way. I wonder if you could say something about that. And then I know, Larry, we have to close soon. Um, I think you touched upon some, some great um, points there. Uh, as you know, I have a junior in high school and, and a daughter who's in middle school right now. And my charge to work with them is to realize that their truth is just as strong as someone else's truth. And when they uh, encounter disagreement, whether in the classroom or online or in life, it is important not to attack the person, but to look at um, the, the uh, a statement being made and provide the arguments that way. Um, so all of those things that you said are extremely important. 
fake news is meant to terrify and create those emotional charges in people. That's why it is created um, uh, to, to get those um, alarm bells signifying in your head. But like I said, stepping back, pausing, trying to understand um, the source, where it come from, comes from. And also like, like I teach my own children, um, you can disagree with a comment, but never attack the person because once it starts getting personal, everything is shut down and, and no minds are open. So you brought up some great points. We have to wrap soon, but I want to talk to you about artificial intelligence and deep fakes. You know, we were all taught to believe our eyes, but now our eyes can deceive us thanks to some technology that can make things look real that are in fact manufactured uh, on a computer. Yes, yeah, so one of my passion areas um, for a very long time is how to recognize deep fakes. And I, I think it's becoming more difficult for uh, the human eye to discern if something has been manipulated either visually, um, textually, uh, audio, audibly. Um, so diving down into to deep fakes is going to take not only computer, um, but also uh, human minds to discern that fact from fiction. It, it's something that um, uh, will continue to be uh, addressed throughout um, our future years, but it's good for our students to know that as technology progresses, so do our strategies and understandings um, and kind of that, that gut check inside you to say, is this true? How can I investigate this to see what it see what it says and, and read laterally across those sources. Lateral reading, what a great strategy and something that we're, as educators, working so hard to teach our students directly in school right now. I have one closing question. So Shaylin, if you could give our audience one 20 second tip, what is it that they can do to make the internet safer for everybody around them? Um, I believe in uh, education instead of um, prohibiting students and children from accessing technology. Uh, from my own experiences in the classroom and with my own children, having them uh, exposed to multiple platforms, um, to the variety of trolls and bots and AI and deep fakes only strengthens their skill set to which they start teaching others in their classroom, their, their educators, um, their parents. So, um, not censoring, but more providing education to support and hone those skills, especially in, in such a time in adolescence when their brains are developing. So that's what I would say. Talk with your, with your child. My kids themselves have social media, and it's important for me as a parent to not only have access to their accounts, but talk to them about private messages they're receiving, hashtags, algorithms, and to understand how they use them in their own personal lives. So I feel that all of that is important for parents and also how to address when something negative happens online. Teach your kids what to do, how to react, and uh, to, um, like we've been preaching the whole time, discern fact from fiction so they know what to act on, what to trust, and what to share. Shelly, before we go, let folks know how they can get a hold of the News Literacy Project and what they can do to follow up on everything we've learned today. Great. Well, thank you so much for having me. Again, my name is Shaylin Farnsworth, and I work at the News Literacy Project. You can access all of our fabulous free resources at newslit.org. And we are more than willing to support not only educators and students in the classroom, but special interest groups and the public at large. Shailen Farnsworth, the National Director of Education Outreach and Success at the News Literacy Project. Thank you so much. Thank you.